Welcome back everybody to another OpenGL tutorial and in this video I'm going to talk about meat mapping. This is a technique often used in computer graphics and it increases both the performance and both the quality of the image which is quite rare because usually if you increase the quality the performance will be worse and if you increase then vice versa. So, uh, here is the new load texture function, which I have shown in the last tutorial, at, and of course this can load any kind of texture right now. Okay, in the init function I just load this chess.jpg image, I open up, here it is, this chess.jpg. This is a 512 by 512 image, which, uh, which is containing, red, uh, which containing white and black squares, about size of 128 by 128, if I remember correctly. Okay, and I just load this in, and in here, in the render function, I just use immediate mode for now to render a big quad in the x, z axis. So it's a 400 width and 400 length, uh, OpenGL unit length and width uh, quad in the minus 3 in the y axis, so it's a little below the player whenever we just start the camera, and uh, it's a, b a big uh, uh, qu uh, quad basically. And I just use this GL text chord to uh, get this image to be repeated a lot of time because as you probably know the GL repeat for whatever whenever this is greater than 100 or at uh, once and uh, so greater than 1 on or less than 0 then the GL repeat is the default operation and this will basically repeat this simple chess image which uh, which is here but several times in this case it will repeat uh, I don't know 200 times maybe or 100 doesn't really matter and uh, now probably 99 times so anyway, if I run this program at the current state, as you can see there is a big quad right here and indeed here is the chess pattern which is repeating a lot of time. So I can look around with the camera and actually I, this is very bad. If I will look at the distance, as you can see it is uh, blinking basically, it's sometimes uh, it's, uh, it seems weird. I'm not sure how uh, YouTube uh, quality is going, but I think you can see there that this is not okay. So if I move the camera all around, this is quite weird. In the distance it should be some grayish color because it is so small that only one pixel of this image can be seen and it will choose some color either black or white and that's what causing these artifacts and that's a problem and that's why uh, uh, meat mappings uh, so that's what meat mappings are for to solve this problem so what basically meat mapping is is basically I get the original image so here it is and I get the half of this image let me demonstrate it with this, get the half of the image and then get the half of the image, half of that, so 25% and so on, down, 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 and we uh, make all of these images and OpenGL will choose the image which it will use to create, the, which it will use to, for the image, which uh, for the texture, according to the size. So for example, if just two pixels are visible from that uh, image because it's so far away then it will probably choose a 2x2 two two image instead of sending the entire 512x512 512 512 image to the graphics card and this could increase the performance as I said if it is not in the graphics card and uh, although it needs a little bit more memory because we have to store all of these meat maps which is basically uh, I believe 33% more memory than just the original image but still, it's uh, it's okay. So it's uh, it's a good technique, and because it sends just a smaller image, then basically because that image is obviously resized, it w has some grayish color. So let me show you what I mean. So let me show it rather how to create this effect. So I will make a second variable here, and this will be a default variable and bool, and uh, just call it generate. And if this generate is true, then we will generate meat max. Oh, by the way, one way of doing meat mapping is save for example from GIMP all of these images, so 512 by 512, 256 by 256, so on, uh, down to 1 by 1 pixel. So that is an important thing. You always have the length and the width and you go until you reach 1 by 1 pixel. If your width and height is not equal, then obviously one uh, one pixel, uh, one dimension will be one pixel while the other is not. In this case you just uh, stick with that one pixel at for example the width is one pixel and just decrease the height or obviously uh, vice and versa. Okay, so here it is, it's a variable I call generate, it's a boolean variable and it will be defaulted for so will not generate mipmaps. And to load actually mipmax you will do uh, at the original way is to use the GL texture image 2D function and load the first image and pass it to zero. This is the level, the second parameter. I just uh, uh, set it to zero back and uh, 
uh, texturing tutorial. Then the half of the image you set it to one. Then the half you set it to two, three, four, five, six, so on until you reach one by one pixel. So this is a very tedious task because obviously you have to go to GIMP and make that lot of images. You have to store that lot of images in the hard drive and you have to call this function a lot of time to load every single image. Instead of doing that I will uh, use some functionality which create the mipmax in runtime. So we just load the basic image and we will create it in runtime. So there is a function in the GLU library, this is available from OpenGL 1.1, so it's a pretty compatible function, it's compatible with everything, called GLU build to the mipmaps. This is the name of the function. So if generate, then I will call the GLU build to the mipmaps. Okay, and uh, let me just fill these parameters a little bit later. And this function is basically does what uh, you would do manually. Instead, it will resize the image to always the half and call this GL texture image, the GL text image for every single half image, and it will automatically increase this number. So you have to just call this one function instead of GL text image. Okay, so if we are generating mipmaps, then I will use this function. Okay, this function almost weighting the exact same parameter as GL text image 2D, except 2, the level is obviously missing because uh, it will automatically increase and uh, the border is not uh, weighted in here, so th these two zero parameters are, I just delete, and after that I'm pretty much ready to compile the program, although mipmaps will not render yet and we will get the exact same result as we had earlier. And that's because uh, I have to choose the function how we want to uh, choose the how we want to choose the correct mip map. Obviously, this GL mag filter, if the magnification filter is called, we can do much about it because it will call only when you have the biggest image, so 512 by 512. And here, obviously, we uh, can't use mip maps if we want to increase the, it again. So, uh, in here, either use GL linear or GL nearest, so whatever you prefer. But in the minification filter, so GL texture min filter, we can actually choose what mip, uh, what mip map do we want to use. Similarly, as in case of pixels, we can use either the nearest or the linear. To do that, I use another underscore mip map and underscore. And here, if how you want to uh, set the mip map, you can either uh, select the nearest nearest mip map or you can select the linear mip map. This is the best possible uh, which you can uh, choose GL linear mip map linear. So it will select the mip maps linearly so you, it will get the mip map which is a little bit smaller and the mip map which is a little bit higher and you know just to put it together and then from that image it will select linearly the pixel. So this is the best possible, but you can use four possible combinations, obviously. You can use the GL nearest meet map nearest, GL linear meet map nearest, GL uh, nearest meet map linear, and what GL linear meet map linear. So these are the four kind of possible things you can do. Uh, so in the magnification uh, filter, you just use GL linear or GL nearest because it doesn't make sense to use uh, meet maps in here because there are no bigger meet maps than the biggest, obviously. Okay, that was pretty much it. So now if I compile this program, alright, one thing I actually forget, as you can see I don't get a result right here, is that I won't only want to use this mip mapping technique if we want to use actually mip mapping. So let me put another if statement right here. If generate, then use the mip mapping, so here, which we have wrote, else, so right here, else, we just use the normal uh, GL linear. Uh, texture function, so here I have just used the GL linear. So what does it do is basically if we are generating meat maps, then basically we are using the meat maps. As if we are not generating meat maps, then we are not using the meat maps. Right, so now if I compile it and run it, as you can see I get the exact same result as previously. And that's because here this generate is false. So let me create that to true. So if I change this generate meat map to true and now compile and run the program, we will see that it is much better than it was previously. As you can see, in the distance it's become uh, grayish color and it doesn't, it doesn't do that much of an artifact and, uh, you know, it's, it's much better looking if we just uh, look at here. And, uh, and yeah, that pretty much should be it. Okay, you can try out the other values, how those work, for example, GL linear meat map nearest and you can see how that works. Let's try it out. I'm not sure how that will look like, but uh, oops, 
let me put it in the screen so you can see it as well it's similar to the other one although this is a bit uh, better but uh, it's similar right and uh, that was one way to do this mip mapping technique the second way to do the mip mapping tec uh, technique is use this gl text parameter i function with a special value so let me show that as well it only came available at opengl 1.4 and it already became uh, depraved at, uh, with opengl 3.0 so to use it, gl text parameter i, and the first parameter as always is what what the target is. So gl texture underscore 2d. The second parameter of this function is gl generate mip map, and the third parameter is gl true to generate mip map, and obviously gl false if you don't want it to generate mip maps. And in this case, we can just use the gl text image 2d as well. Okay, so let me see how that look like. It pretty much should be the same as it was. Okay, apparently I had to change this uh, order. So first of all, I call just the GL text parameter i with GL generate mip map and GL true, and then uh, and then fill up the texture and then call this uh, minification and magnification filter as it doesn't work basically I'm not sure why it is because it should it's supposed to work something probably with the drivers so anyway I just call this GL text parameter e i with uh, generating the texture map to true load the image and then uh, call the mip map GL texture minification and magnification filter okay so now if I run the program I get the exact same result as we had earlier so as you can see this is similar okay this was the second way of doing it and the most recent way of doing it is basically to use a simple function called gl generate mip map this is a very simple function it only came available at opengl 3.0 so it became a core functionality so it, it depends if you can run that if or if your target platform can run that but it's as simple as calling gl uh, generate mip map so let me delete this uh, generation in this second and here after you loaded the image just use the uh, if uh, so if we are generating mip max if generate then gl gen generate mip map mip map and it's just waiting one parameter the target which is gl texture underscore 2d because we are working with 2d textures and it is as simple as that although to use this function you probably need the glee header file which i showed you in the glsl tutorial basically just download the uh, glee and put the header file and the c file into the same folder and whenever you compile a program compile the c file with it so glee and uh, glee.c and now if i compile it and it takes a little bit longer obviously and run it as you can see i get oops I get the exact I get the exact same result as we had earlier except I use the most recent functionality so obviously if you are if you want to use uh, the most uh, recent version so basically you want to use OpenGL 3.0 or above you should use this GL generate mip map if you are using some previous version so you want compatibility then you should use that GL you build to the mip maps function and um, you really shouldn't use the GL text parameter i which I showed you in the second uh, option so that pretty much should conclude the tutorial it wasn't that interesting but it could be useful later on I will add this to the FPS games as well so thank you for watching and have a great day